Dear friends, aging is an inevitable part of life. After weathering the storms of our journey, each of us seeks peace as our bodies grow weary, needing rest after a lifetime of worries. Yet, in old age, people sometimes hide their feelings, leaving their later years filled with unease and concern. It's only when lying on a hospital bed, watching time slip away meaninglessly, that we realize how much precious time we've lost. So, in old age, please do not hide the following truths. First is love and affection. Love is not only beautiful in youth, it remains one of life's most wonderful things when experienced in old age. Although old age lacks the romance and passion of youth, it offers care, understanding, and empathy. Having someone to share life's joys and sorrows is already a blessing, but life becomes even more fulfilling when you find someone to walk with you until the end. However, not everyone gets to experience this complete happiness. Old age can bring the sorrow of separation due to death, and when one reaches this stage, loneliness often creeps in. For some, the idea of a second chance at companionship emerges, but this is often met with judgment and misunderstanding. Many older people feel compelled to hide their feelings and refrain from living authentically. A woman, who we will call Ms. H, is 60 years old. Many at her age are frail. Some even need walking sticks. But she is still blessed with good health, energetic, and still able to ride her motorbike. She married at 19, and by 30, her husband passed away suddenly, leaving her to raise four children alone. The eldest was only 10 years old, and the youngest just one. Her family faced economic hardships with nothing but a small house. Looking at her children, Ms. H had to wipe away her tears, gather her strength, and take on all responsibilities. There were moments when she felt overwhelmed, exhausted, and wanted to give up, but she couldn't bear the thought of abandoning her children. So, she pulled herself together and worked hard to raise and educate them. After her husband passed, some men expressed interest in building a family with her. But she couldn't bear the idea of your children, my children, and our children, and how difficult life would be for her kids. So, she declined and remained single, choosing to honor her late husband and care for her children alone. Over the years, she replaced the modest home with a five-room house equipped with modern amenities. She even planned for her children's future by building a solid foundation for them to add on to the house later. Now, her children are grown, married, and living far away, only visiting occasionally. Miss H is left alone. There are days when she falls ill and must force herself to prepare simple meals just to take her medication. In old age, she feels lonely. Two years ago, at a local veterans gathering, she happened to meet a man five years older than her. They talked a lot, and she learned that his wife had passed away three years prior. His two children, like hers, lived far away, leaving him to live alone. After the meeting, she was surprised when he called her a few days later. Over time, they frequently talked on the phone, and he eventually visited her. Each time, she treated him politely, as she did with any friend, but she could feel that he was growing more affectionate towards her. After nearly two years of this, he finally told her, why don't you come live with me? We can take care of each other in our old age, but M's H declined, fearing her children and neighbors would gossip. A few months ago, M's H was bedridden with a high fever until almost noon, when he heard she was sick and hadn't eaten. The man brought her a bowl of soup and insisted she eat it to take her medicine. She didn't feel like eating, but seeing his concern, she forced herself to eat. Once again, he said, I told you, if you came to live with me, I could take care of you during times like this, but she shook her head. I've already told you, marrying now wouldn't solve anything. Please, just let me be hearing this, he cried and said, I care about you, but you don't understand my feelings. In truth, she had long noticed that he was a kind and decent man, but they were no longer young, both with children and grandchildren. She didn't want to spark romantic feelings at this late stage in life and feared her children or others would mock her. Although their relationship was pure, she worried about the judgment of having an older man visit her so often. She felt compelled to settle for a life of simple friendship, even though deep down his care had touched the loneliness that had lingered in her heart for decades. Dear friends, in old age, Emotional needs make up 90% of one's life. Older people have the right to enjoy happiness just like anyone else, even if it's just a fleeting warmth in the twilight years. Don't let fear of judgment make you hide your feelings. I don't shy away from simple joys and happiness in old age out of embarrassment or concern for what others may think. The second issue is assets. In the minds of many parents, leaving assets for their children is always an important matter that requires careful consideration. Should they leave assets to their children? Will the children know how to use those assets wisely, as the parents expect? Many parents worry that if they leave a large inheritance, their children might become dependent, lazy, or lack the motivation to strive for success. Additionally, distributing assets early could lead to conflicts among siblings who feel dissatisfied with the division. As a result, some parents choose to hide their assets, not letting their children know how much wealth they actually possess. However, 
This can lead to situations where, if a parent passes away suddenly without leaving a will, the children may not know where the assets are, whether any loans were made, or to whom. In some cases, families have even been torn apart due to disputes arising from the lack of a will dividing the estate. In March 2011, an elderly woman suddenly passed away without leaving a will. When she died, her room was locked. With the agreement of the family, her brother unlocked the outer door and unsealed the inner door to access the room containing the safe. Inside the room, there were not only the safe but also several documents and papers placed on the bed. The inventoried assets included 100 tails of gold, a large sum of cash, and 1 million U.S. dollars, numerous diamonds, and 17 savings books many of which recorded amounts of tens of billions of dollars. It took several days to count all the assets. Records showed that the elderly woman owned many factories and plots of land. No one in the family knew she had such a large fortune. Her brother recounted that all these assets were placed in the sealed safe, and the keys were handed over to the enforcement officer for safekeeping. Her adopted child, who was studying abroad, was her sole heir. Due to the vast size of the assets, her brother and the adopted child agreed to co-own the property and signed a contract to rent two bank safety deposit boxes for one year to store the assets. When the contract expired, the adopted child wanted to withdraw the assets, but her brother disagreed, claiming that the matter was still under dispute. He wanted to extend the storage contract waiting for their two siblings abroad to return and resolve the issue. Subsequently, numerous conflicts and disputes arose over the large inheritance, severely straining relationships between the uncle and niece and among other family members. In reality, when reaching a certain age, it is advisable to publicly disclose one's assets to avoid situations where sudden death occurs without leaving a will. Otherwise, it could become the root cause of tragic and devastating family conflicts. The third issue is health. As people age, it is common for them to feel that they don't want to burden their children or cause them unnecessary worry. As a result, when illness strikes, they often comfort themselves by saying, I'll be fine by tomorrow or I can endure this. It'll get better soon. They always believe that they will recover quickly, which leads them to frequently hide their illnesses. By the time their children find out, the illness has often become too severe and it is too late. In doing so, they inadvertently cause their children to experience deep regret. The fourth problem is past mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes in life, from minor ones to those with serious consequences. Feelings of regret and guilt for these actions are entirely natural, but they can harm our health if we hold on to them for too long. If we remain haunted by our past mistakes, we will never find peace in old age. A woman and her husband often visited their son's family in the city to see their grandchildren and alleviate the loneliness. Every time they visited, she couldn't help but feel sorry for the children. They spent their days attending school, playing video games, or watching TV. Even during summer vacations, they were stuck at home because their parents were at work all day, only returning late in the evening. Feeling sympathy for her grandchildren, she suggested that they come to the countryside during the summer for a change of scenery. Her son and grandchildren were excited about the idea, but her daughter-in-law hesitated, partly because she missed the children and partly because she was concerned that the grandparents might not take proper care of them. However, the grandmother reassured her they're already in first and third grade. It's time for them to start looking after each other after some persuasion, the daughter-in-law reluctantly agreed. On the way to the countryside, the grandmother listened to her grandchildren's innocent questions, and she couldn't help but feel even more affection for them. They marveled at things like water buffaloes, corn plants, and ducks swimming in the ponds. The grandmother knew she had made the right decision by bringing them to the countryside for their summer break. She taught them how to bathe themselves, eat neatly, and follow a routine. When they had free time, they would pull weeds together, go to the village market, and enjoy traditional snacks. Seeing the joy on their faces brought her so much happiness. However, one day, the couple attended a family gathering, leaving the children in the care of their daughter. For some reason, the grandmother couldn't shake an uneasy feeling during the meal. She rushed through it, urging her husband to return home quickly to check on the children. When they arrived, they saw a large crowd of neighbors gathered outside their home. Sensing that something was wrong, she anxiously asked what had happened. A neighbor, looking troubled, said, The children were playing together earlier, but now your youngest grandson is missing, and everyone is frantically searching for him. Upon hearing this, the grandmother felt like she was losing her mind. She cried in anguish, fearing for her grandson's life. People mentioned they were using nets to search the pond, but despite their efforts, they couldn't find him. Her heart shattered when she learned that her grandson had drowned. Overwhelmed with regret, she could only weep, hoping her daughter-in-law would understand her sorrow. When her daughter-in-law and son arrived and learned of the tragedy, they were inconsolable. The grandmother, her daughter, and her daughter-in-law were all overcome with grief. 
the grandmother was filled with guilt. If only she hadn't insisted on bringing her grandson to the countryside, this tragedy wouldn't have occurred. If only she hadn't gone to the gathering, the child wouldn't have suffered. She knew her daughter-in-law was heartbroken, angry at her for bringing the children to the countryside. The child was laid to rest, but the three women, all consumed by pain and regret, couldn't even speak to one another. Perhaps the weight of their grief and remorse was too much for them to face together. Before her daughter-in-law returned to the city, the grandmother knelt before her, begging her to vent her anger whether through words or actions so that they might find peace again. She feared that she would carry this torment for the rest of her life. But her daughter-in-law said nothing, only looking at her with deep resentment, as if she still demanded justice for her child. From that moment on, the relationship between the mother-in-law and daughter-in-law was irrevocably damaged. Since then, the grandmother has not had a restful night's sleep. She is haunted by the fact that her carelessness caused her son and daughter-in-law to lose the child they adored. She lost her beloved grandchild, her trust in her family, and her standing in the eyes of the neighbors. She knows she will carry this burden of guilt for the rest of her days. Dear friends, regret is a powerful, invisible force that erodes the peace and serenity of old age. The key is to find a way to free yourself from the grip of remorse for past mistakes and wrongdoings. When confronted with situations that bring you pain, learn to release the inner turmoil and allow yourself the grace of being imperfect. Holding on to regret doesn't help you overcome what you can't control. Be kind to yourself and liberate yourself from the past. The story of my grandparents will. When my grandmother gave birth to her third son, Relatives and neighbors urged my grandparents to try for a daughter, fearing that having only sons would not bring prosperity. My grandfather, driven by a desire to grow wealthier, told my grandmother, let's try again. What's there to fear? If nature provides children, it will provide for their needs too. I've already fathered 11 children, lost four, and we still have seven left. Just leave everything to me, and we'll see what the future brings. My grandmother hesitated because, after giving birth to my uncles and especially to my father, her health had visibly declined. But thinking of the family legacy, she resolved to have one more child, my aunt. She was born 12 years after my father, but she was paralyzed in both legs and depended on others for all her personal care. As I grew older, my grandmother told me that when she was pregnant with my aunt, she was already over 40 years old. She thought working hard would make the delivery easier, but during the harvest season, she overexerted herself, and the baby was born prematurely. My aunt was so tiny and fragile that her head was no bigger than a light bulb, her skin wrinkled and shriveled. My grandfather said, I saved every bit of money we had to treat her illness. They took her to every hospital they could find, searching for the best doctors. People advised them to pray, so my grandmother visited famous temples to offer prayers, but it was all in vain. In the end, they didn't achieve the prosperity that people said comes with sons. Money kept flowing out for my aunt's treatment, and she remained bedridden with her legs developing slowly, though her mind was as sharp as anyone else's. My grandparents loved her the most among their children. Whatever good food they had, they would give her more, justifying it by saying she was the youngest, and her brother should let her have more. The family's financial situation deteriorated to the point where they sometimes had to eat sweet potatoes and cassava to make up for the lack of rice. Whenever there was a bit of rice, my grandmother would save it for my aunt. My uncles couldn't endure the hardship. There were times when the sweet potatoes would get stuck in their throats, and they would run to gulp down water, cursing the situation. One uncle angrily told my grandmother, I swear I will succeed and won't live like this. Choking on cassava forever, my grandfather heard this and chased him with a stick. If you think you're so good, go ahead, leave. Let's see how you fare out there. So my uncle left. He dropped out of school and started working as a truck assistant, traveling across the country. Later, he tried his hand at various trades, buying and selling whatever he could. Sometimes he succeeded. Sometimes he failed. Occasionally, he'd stop by the house, give my grandmother some money, and tell her, don't worry. In business, you have to take risks. Except the ups and downs seeing him healthy and wiser, my grandmother was reassured. Eventually, my uncle met the daughter of a fabric merchant, and they fell in love. Despite the merchant's objections, seeing my uncle as a simple country boy while her daughter came from a prestigious family, the marriage went ahead, and my uncle stayed in the capital, fulfilling his dream of leaving behind his rural roots. My other uncle wasn't a street smart, but excelled in academics. He became a doctor climbing the career ladder quickly. He even married the daughter of a high-ranking official, bringing pride to my grandparents. Today, they live in a luxurious three-story villa near the city's famous lake. As for my father, he wasn't as fortunate. He married my mother, a farmer's daughter, and chose to stay in the village to care for my grandparents. Seeing my aunt bedridden, with my aging grandparents still caring for her, my father couldn't bring himself to leave them. My grandfather told him, 
It's up to you. Whether you build your life here or in the city, as long as you work hard, you can turn stone into bread. So, my father focused on farming, earning enough each year to provide for our family. As I grew older, my grandmother shared with me, your father didn't know how to court a woman. I had to help him win over your mother. Who would have the courage to marry into a family with an elderly couple and a bedridden sister to care for? But out of love for your father, your mother didn't hesitate. She always treated your aunt like her own sister. Thanks to my mother, my grandparents no longer had to worry about caring for my aunt. She took care of everything for her, from meals to personal hygiene. Occasionally, when my uncle's wives visited from the city, they would remark, You're so diligent. I couldn't even get near the bedpan, let alone handle it. My mother would simply smile and say, I'm used to it. She's like my own sister. What's there to be uncomfortable about? One day, a road was built through my grandparents' land, and although the family home and part of the yard were preserved, a significant portion of their garden was taken. They received compensation of several hundred thousand dollars, and my grandparents called a family meeting. They assumed that my uncles living comfortably in the city wouldn't care much about the money. However, to their surprise, my uncles wanted the money divided equally among the children. My eldest uncle spoke bluntly, Father, I think the money should be shared. It's part of the family's legacy, and we should all receive a portion. Though my grandfather was angry, he ultimately agreed to divide the money into five shares, as suggested by my uncle. My aunt, hearing this from her room, said, Give my share to sister-in-law. I don't need the money since I can't do much with it, my mother refused, saying, Father and mother are still healthy. They should keep the money. We're doing fine on our own. Later, my eldest uncle's wife remarked, I've never seen anyone turn down money to which my father replied, money is important, but it's not everything. Time passed, and one day we received a call that my uncle had been in a severe accident. We rushed to the city, fearing the worst. Thankfully, he pulled through, but he needed a blood transfusion. My aunt insisted on donating her blood, saying, I may be paralyzed, but I'm still healthy enough to help my brother in the end. My father was a match and donated the blood. After the incident, my grandfather decided to write his will. He declared, Whoever takes on the responsibility of caring for your aunt will inherit all our assets. Both of my uncles declined, citing their busy lives in the city. In the end, my parents agreed to take care of my aunt, and the family's assets were left in their hands, although no one seemed to care about it anymore. If you find these stories inspiring and they motivate you to take action, please comment 9. If not, comment 0. Your feedback means a lot to us. Thank you for your valuable time.